Hey everyone, Jason Wackerly here. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to catch Lake Michigan perch. I just caught my limit of five. Caught a lot more today with my wife, but uh, we kept 10 of them. And we threw back about probably 20 or 30 of them. Big ones, little ones, but we like to keep about the 10 to 12 inches, we throw back the smaller ones. Sometimes we'll keep eight, nine inches if you're only keep, like catching that size. But we saw tons of big ones today. I threw back a few of them that were over 13 inches long. I threw back a bunch of smaller baby ones, but it was a pretty decent day. We've had some up and down weather this year. We've had a very bad, you know, up and down roller coaster ride with the lake perch populations the past 10 years. 2011 was the last good year we really had where we absolutely did well. And all of a sudden every year after that it got worse and worse. And then 2019 we had a good year again all of a sudden which we thought was a fluke. Lake Michigan is going up really really bad. It's becoming a problem on a lot of Lake Michigan shores. Homeowners are starting to see problems with water in their houses, businesses as well are closing down along the lake. In places that we used to need a lawn net to get down and net fish, we can actually just reach down with our hands if we bent over. It's kind of crazy, the water's going up. And because of that, a lot more life is occurring around the Lake Michigan shores. Smallmouth bass are starting to flourish in populations, bluegills and crappies are showing up more, perch are being caught in places they've never been caught before, because these fish like to use walls, rocks, wood, any structure they can hide in, but perch like water temperatures that are between 58 to 66 degrees, we always say 62 degrees is the magic number, around 60, and if you get colder temperatures, they seem to move out into deeper water. If you get warmer temperatures, they seem to move out into deeper water. So if you get a 60 degree water temperature around shore in summertime, chances are you're gonna have perch. The season opens June 16th. If you have 60 degree water temperatures already, you'll probably have perch around. Sometimes you need the water to warm up if you have a late spring or a colder early summer and July and early August will pick up, but usually around late August, early September, the bite just dies. We don't know where they go. They disappear out in deeper water, and it's been that way ever since I was a kid. I've been following these perch since the 1990s, over 20 years, and there was a full season back in the 1990s even because they were trying to bring back the numbers of perch, and we were even when we were salmon fishing, we were catching tons of perch when the season was closed. So, now that the season, like, the population's a little bit worse, we don't see closed seasons or anything, but the five fish bait limit hasn't helped the population. I don't really understand, personally, the five fish limit. Because you can go out on a park pond in Milwaukee, keep 10. You can go out on an inland lake and keep 25, but it's like good luck finding jumbo perch anywhere anymore, which is sad because a lot of people really devastated the populations on a lot of the inland lakes. As soon as something is found out, if you find big panfish, try to keep it to yourself because that lake will get absolutely hammered if you don't keep it to yourself. A lot of people like to post fishing reports, stuff like that. There's spots on Lake Michigan I won't even give up. Like, it, if you know a good spot, try to keep it to yourself because <clears throat> we're starting to lose public shore access because people are just leaving litter all over and then people complain and if they complain enough, you can lose your rights to fish a public shore spot. So, just make sure you pick up your trash, make sure if you find fish, Keep it on a down low, not every spot's a secret, like the main harbors and stuff, but you will find these perch in really small locations, and 
you can get five people in there and that's too many people. It's like these fish are just being found all along the lake shore. If you take your boat, you can find them along rock eddies, or uh, jetties I mean. You can find them around rock walls, weed beds. Sometimes if the water temperatures change, they'll push inside of a marina and use weeds for structure. And if that water temperature gets too warm, they'll push back out. But these perch like that 60 degree, 60 to 60 to 65 degree range. They just go nuts. And I mean, today we, like I said, we caught a pretty good amount. We tapped 10 of them. And this is about the size we like to keep. Nice 10, 11 inches. The bigger ones, they just kind of get off tasting. They're not as good. The meat gets a little bit drier. Tasting, I can't explain it, but those small ones, super flaky, tender perch flays. Absolutely delicious out of Lake Michigan. I'm gonna show you guys now. Sorry, I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna show you guys what we use for bait. These fish like to go after anything that resembles an alewife bait fish or a smelt. And what an alewife is, it's a silver bait fish that lives in Lake Michigan. And they look kind of like this Berkeley flicker shad right here. So this is a good bait, the size five flicker shad. You can go down to a size four, but I always do better for some reason on size five. They, those perch don't mess around. They'll take down a seven inch alewife if they have to eat. And I've seen it happen. But the baits we tend to use are about two inches long. Just anything. That looks like an alewife, silver, usually it'll get hit. We'll fish that on a 30 second, two 30 second ounce jig heads in a tandem rig, or we'll fish a single 1 16th ounce jig head. And you just sit there and you just give the rod, cast it out, let it sink to the all the way down to the bottom, and you just give it little snaps of the rod tip. 3 inch wrist flicks. I just like to use my wrist like that. Here I got a fishing rod right here actually. You just sit there and just use little flicks of the wrist. Just one little pop, let it fall, one little pop, keep that line tight and you'll feel a tap or just a little bit of weight on your line and you just set the hook. But we like to use Sits in a half foot light action St. Croix rods. This is a St. Croix Triumph. Sits in a half foot with a little Fluger tr try on reel. For jigging, I go with 8 pound Power Pro braid. It's got a 1 pound test diameter. What that means is braided fishing line, it's actually thinner than normal monofilament line. And an eight pound test with a one pound diameter means it's got one pound monofilament diameter. So this line is like one pound test, but it's got eight pound breaking strength. But braided fishing line that says eight or 10 pound, you can practically haul in trees with this stuff. It's a very strong fishing line. I don't believe the eight, the eight pound breaking strength. I mean, I've reeled in king salmon that were 15 to 20 pounds just fine with that, where if I was using an 8 pound test mono, it probably would have broke. So I like the braided fishing line connected to a fluorocarbon leader. I go with 8 pound test fluorocarbon, 8 pound test braided fishing line. I tie them together with a back to back uni knot, an FG knot, or a blood knot. My favorite knot personally is the blood knot, it's easier for me to tie. People don't think it'll work. I've seen a lot of uh, people online, like on forums, talking about it, saying that the knot slips. 
the reason why your blood not slips if you've ever tried tying braided fishing line to floral is because you're doing it wrong. You take the braided side and you tie it 15 to 20 times. The fluorocarbon side you do four to seven times. It all depends on the thickness of the line. You do less wraps if it's thicker line. You do more wraps if it's thin. With the eight pound to eight pound connection, I do 20 wraps with the braid, and I do five wraps with the fluorocarbon. And it, the blood knot's perfect. It cinches down. Let's see if I can actually show you guys. I hope this shows up, but right here, is the knot, here's the fluorocarbon, here's the braid, and you can barely see that knot. It's thin, it goes through the guides, doesn't break, that's the blood knot. And I stopped using swivels for connecting leaders because you can knot the front guide of your rod tip out using a swivel. Not worth it when you're using a $100 fishing rod. So. This is a St. Croix Triumph, sits in a half foot, but you can go with any ultralight, any medium light, any light action. And if you don't want to go with braided fishing line, go with like a six pound test monofilament, like a Trilene XL, Berkeley Trilene XL is a good line, or that's a line I like to use. It's affordable, gets the job done, but uh, for jigging, I personally feel like the braided fishing line helps you feel the bites more. It's got no stretch, you'll feel every bite, you'll be able to set the hook. If you get a big fish on, like a carp, sheep's head, salmon, trout, you'll be able to get them in. And that's the rod I use for jigging, six and a half foot light action. The rod I use for casting spoons, like 1 8 and 1 4 ounce cast masters. Like that guy right here. Here's a 1 8 ounce. Or the Berkeley Flicker Shad, or you can use a Rapala Shad Wrap in size 5. As long as these baits look like an alewife, like I said, they'll attack them. And this rod right here, I consider this kind of a walleye, smallmouth bass, lake perch rod, because these lake perch get up to 16 inches long. Some guys have caught 17 inches in Lake Michigan. Other guys claim 18 inches, but I've never seen it. My biggest ones are 15, 16 inches. But uh, this is a six and a half foot Shimano Claris medium light action rod with a medium sized Fluger Tryon reel with 10 pound Power Pro and a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I got it tied together with the blood knot, just like I just showed you. What you do with the flicker shad, you throw it out, crank it down to the diving depth, and then you just pop the rod tip while you're reeling, just like that. Work it like a jerk bait. If you guys know what a jerk bait is, a Rapala, you just twitch it, twitch it, twitch it, make sure that line is tight, and that's what we do. If you guys want to get it down deeper, Put a large split shot sinker about 20, 18 to 24 inches up the line. Let it sink down to the bottom. Again, you just twitch it or jig it back in just like you would a jig. And you just want that bait darting, pausing, darting, pausing. Just like, just pop, pop, pop. And when they see that, they think it's a dying alewife and they'll come over and either follow it or hit it. Okay? Today, I had tons of follows on the flicker shed, but I didn't catch anything on it. I caught everything today on the jig. My wife and I didn't get out at all this year for Lake Perch. We've been smallmouth bass fishing on the rivers, catching a lot of them, doing some rock bass fishing, catching a couple walleyes here and there. We're about to do some cat fishing, make some videos doing that, have some fun out there, catching some big catfish, but Right now, late perch are biting. They're delicious. We're gonna have a fish fry tomorrow night and maybe go out and catch some more soon. But uh, I hope this video helped you guys. This is what I do for catching late perch. It's been working for me for over 20 years. I promise you guys it's not gonna fail you. If those perch are around and they're biting, you're gonna for sure 
catch them on what I just showed you. I'm going to teach you guys one more trick. If you guys are using Castmasters, I use the 1 4th ounce for casting and just reeling, and I use the 1 8th ounce for jigging. I let it sink to the bottom and I just jig it back, and that thing just kind of shimmies like that, and those perch love that sometimes. And sometimes you just need a cast and reel, and that heavier one gets out there, and it's got a nice action. It's about the size of the alewives that they eat regularly. But like I said, I've seen these perch take down some huge alewives, and as you can see, they've got a pretty big mouth. So this bait right here, they have no problem going after that. But we got our 10 fish today, and I gotta flay these guys, which I won't put you guys through seeing all the blood and guts. But I hope this video helps you guys, because like I said, it's what I've been doing for over 20 years, and I've caught a lot of perch in my lifetime. So <laughs> this video helped you guys. Subscribe to my page, hit the like button, share the video. This is Lake Michigan Perch Fishing for you, and if this works for me, it's going to work for you. Good luck fishing out there, and take care.